Hi, everyone. Welcome to our channel, Fine. Douglas McGregor emphasizes the significance of unity in our nation, highlighting the frustration felt by many Americans regarding the lack of cohesion outside of military spending. He stresses the importance of finding common ground across party lines and advocates for a focus on shared traditional American values to restore unity and strengthen the republic. He discusses various initiatives, aiming to be action-oriented by establishing structures in every state and district to advance agenda items and ensure accountability among elected officials. He stresses the importance of American citizenship, urging citizens to take their duties seriously and emphasizing the need to value citizenship alongside its obligations. He presents an opportunity for individuals to have a tangible impact, addressing common concerns about individual influence on national issues. He outlines plans to provide fact-based information and welcomes collaboration with like-minded organizations. Other, he suggests that the current situation situation is far more perilous than commonly understood, particularly highlighting the escalating tensions in Ukraine and the potential for a U.S.-led NATO clash with Russia. This, he argues, poses a significant risk not only to the United States, but also to Europe. Additionally, he points out the volatile situation in the Middle East, where heightened emotions among Israelis following acts of violence by Hamas could lead to further instability. He underscores the need for careful handling of the situation to prevent a broader regional conflict, noting pressure on and other Arab states to respond to humanitarian concerns in Gaza. He observes that the situation presents a challenge for the Israelis as they aim to isolate Gaza by cutting off water and electricity, hoping to weaken Hamas. However, he warns of the danger in this approach, especially if Egypt sends an aid convoy to Gaza and Israel threatens to respond with force. Such an escalation could trigger broader regional conflict, with countries like Turkey potentially offering assistance to Egypt. Despite limited options for intervention, he suggests urging Israel to show restraint and acknowledges the risks involved in any military action in Gaza. He believes that the issue of election integrity deserves immediate attention, noting the historical struggles between Republicans and Democrats dating back to the 1960 election of President John F. Kennedy, which he suggests may have been tainted by corruption. He emphasizes that the problem has only worsened over time, necessitating action. He explains that efforts are underway within certain groups to address this issue, recognizing recognizing the constitutional authority of states to manage elections. He acknowledges the lack of federal standards for elections and suggests implementing measures such as voter ID requirements, which remain unresolved at the state level. There are instances where individuals, regardless of citizenship, can register to vote simply by obtaining a driver's license, which is deemed unacceptable. Measures such as matching government IDs with legal residencies are proposed to address this issue alongside the suggestion to make election a public holiday. Emphasizing the importance of in-person voting and citizenship, he questions the ease of obtaining absentee ballots and advocates for a re-evaluation of absentee voting qualifications. Expressing concerns over the reliability of voting machines, he advocates for the use of paper ballots and emphasizes the need for bipartisan or neutral supervision at polling stations. He also calls for penalties, including mandatory jail time for electoral fraud. He underscores the significance of this issue and encourages bipartisan participation in addressing it, asserting that it is in everyone's best interest to do so. He believes that the events following 9-11 should have sparked greater interest in border security. He questions why the immediate response wasn't to secure the entire country, including airports, seaports, and coastal waters. He asserts the need for increased attention to the issue, particularly due to the significant number of individuals entering the country illegally, placing strain on states and local communities. He highlights the challenges faced by areas like New York City and Chicago, where resources are limited to accommodate these arrivals and provide employment opportunities. He suggests that Americans often only become interested in such matters when directly impacted, such as experiencing rising crime rates or financial burdens due to illegal immigration. He advocates for viewing illegal border crossings as a form of criminal activity and notes the prevailing perception among Americans that crime rates will continue to rise. If that statement holds true, we're seeing a record high of 56% of Americans reporting higher crime levels in their communities compared to recent years. 
This should raise concerns among those paying attention. Addressing how to secure the area, I believe military intervention may be necessary, as stance OCOCOC likely supports. While our border patrol consists of dedicated individuals, they are facing overwhelming challenges. There's been a notable increase in suicides among border patrol agents, reflecting their frustration with the current administration's restrictions on enforcement. Ultimately, deploying the army to establish a secure southern border may become necessary. Ocock also notes the staggering death toll from fentanyl overdoses, emphasizing the urgency of addressing drug-related issues. We're reviewing this as a domestic war, we must consider the cartels as adversaries and prioritize border defense with military force. This approach aims to deter violence from drug cartels and criminals attempting to enter our country illegally, underscoring the need for a strong current to halt these activities effectively. Mike, I want to emphasize the importance of your recent statement. It's true that politicians often talk a big game about these issues, but when it's time to take action through voting or proposing legislation, they often back away. This is typically due to pressure from major donors who may not prioritize border security. These powerful interests, essentially oligarchs, have significant financial stakes in maintaining the status quo of criminal activity. This poses a significant challenge. OSI OSI aims to identify and remove such representatives who do not align with the interests of the people, replacing them with individuals who truly represent us. Furthermore, it's crucial for Americans to recognize that it's not just a few government officials pushing a radical leftist agenda, even corporations are now aligning themselves with these ideologies for profit and political gain. The influence of such agendas is evident in institutions like the teachers' unions, which have contributed to issues in public school education. It's it's important to acknowledge that schools are becoming platforms for indoctrination rather than places of education. He believes this is a significant issue that needs to be addressed urgently. He emphasizes the importance of parents playing a central role in shaping their children's values and behaviors. He expresses concern about the early introduction of sex education, particularly in the third grade, questioning the motives behind such curriculum decisions. He suggests that it may be an attempt to influence children's beliefs and behaviors in ways that he finds them additionally, he highlights the challenges faced by parents who oppose such teachings, noting instances of intimidation from school boards and even federal authorities. He advocates for action at both the state and national levels to address these concerns through legislation. He strongly opposes procedures allowing minors to make decisions about altering their sexual identity, advocating for criminal prosecution of any medical professionals involved. He argues that waiting until the age of 18 for such decisions is reasonable and may help individuals realize that such choices are not necessarily permanent. He suggests that some may view the decision to alter one's sexual identity as reversible, akin to getting a tattoo that can be removed later, although he disagrees with this notion. He links this issue to broader concerns about human trafficking and pedophilia, which are prevalent not only in the United States, but also in many other countries. He expresses distress over the large number of missing children, particularly in Ukraine, and emphasizes the urgent need to address this problem systematically. He criticizes certain individuals on the left, including former Supreme Court Justice Jensberg, for advocating for a reduction in the age of consent, which he finds unacceptable. He calls for action from representatives who are willing to support legislation combating these issues and opposing what he perceives as harmful agendas. Regarding taking action, he recommends visiting the website OurCountryChoice.com, where instructions for becoming a member are provided at no cost. Once a member, individuals can explore different areas of interest and find ways to contribute to the cause. He notes that while the issues discussed are significant, they are not the only ones the organization opposes, cite concerns about ongoing wars, the restoration of the rule of law, and the need for police to perform their duties without fear of retribution. 